all right guys thanks for clicking in over here and hanging out this video i hope helps people because i was doing this on and didn't find anything very informative on the uh on the internet about what i was doing here so i had to do some research and figure this out and what i'm doing is we're we're putting uh these are gamma matches on this, this Mako shooting star antenna and how to properly mount them so that they're, 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 they'll function. And uh, doing this because we want to maximize as much as we can with a stock radio. We want to use a stock radio that's legal limit and you, and you can do a lot with a little bit. Like you can, you know, if you're just going to run just your stock CB radio, you know, all you need is a is a good antenna. This is proven time and time again, especially if you're on a sideband CB radio. You can really do wonders on sideband if you've got a good CB radio that can do sideband. You don't need a lot of power. It's very very misconceived as to what you have to have to do like what they want to call uh, like like skip. If you're on a sideband. With a regular CB radio, not a DX radio, but just a regular CB radio that, that 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 that'll stay on frequency, and several models will do that. Galaxies won't. Those are DX radios, anyway. It's supposed to be 10 meters. Supposed to have a license to run those, but a like a Cobra, that's uh, or, or or a Colt Black Shadow or something, or or a Galaxy Malacca that's only a 15, you know, swings its normal 15 watts or whatever. It's a uh, it's on sideband. You know, some of that stuff will do all right. But anyways. So to drive a Mako Shooting Star, usually it comes with some relatively small gamma matches. Like, I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I climbed up my ladder, and I've got one of the, like, you get these, these are what, it, what this beam would come with originally. Let me show you. This is the little stalkers that it comes with. You can see the difference in size, and it has an SL239 connector for your regular CB radio connections and uh just a lot smaller in size this kind of runs down that element a little bit longer so you get more surface area for your beam to to receive a capacitance a, a frequency dr driven situation thingy whatever you want to call it but uh what i was doing this video for is because when i was putting these i got these things from mako the antenna manufacturer this is what this is a mako shooting star so four element it's got flat and vertical antennas i'm standing on a six foot ladder the antenna itself i think is i can't i'm not sure i'm on a six foot ladder and it doesn't even come up to the first set of beams right off the ground there it's a relatively large antenna i would think it's every bit of uh i can't remember when i was 20 something foot the boom is 25 foot or something i got i can't remember anyways but I wanted to do a video on how to mount these things because I was looking up stuff. I was like, got these things in the mail, and I'm like, okay, I gotta put these things on. And the brackets, it didn't come with any instructions how to put the brackets on right. And so I'm doing a video so you can see how I've mounted this thing. And according to the technician guy that I deal with, some other stuff, this is how you mount this beam or this uh, gamma match. Of course, what you have is the center conductor right here off of your coax and it's a direct connection so you have to crimp i got rid of the little plastic thing around it with my with a, with a heat gun direct and crimped it and then i soldered the center conductor to my eyelet and then your outside shield to prevent it from corroding because it's just copper right there that comes you know I, I i i didn't cut the shield i unbraided it so that i could keep maintain as much of the the thickness of the wire that was there and I use several layers of heat shrink, and then it connects to another eyelet, which has been soldered to the to the to the heat to the shield. I didn't just crimp it and put it on there. I soldered that that eyelet to the shield, just like I soldered the eyelet to the center conductor to ensure a really good connection is what we want, as much as connection as as good as possible. And uh, I've got it. Uh, where, but we're just a little bit of a just a just a teeny gap right there which isn't hurt a thing you can see right here and, and this is the vertical element and we've got the same thing on the on the on the horizontal or the flat side they would call it but you see how that bracket is mounted offset and you see how that bracket is set up so that we've got the, the gamma match even with the beam element if you put that on the other way it's going to be all cattywampus and a quick little thumb to note note to thumb or write this down this screw right here 
this screw goes into that. This is your insulator. This is your, they call it a capacitor. And typically to tune these, you just, you know, for the frequency that I'm running, which is 10, 11 meters and stuff, it's, uh, I've just moved, keep it, keep this slit all the way in. But I made sure, well, not all the way in, because I wanted this about a quarter, about a half an inch away from this. Because your center conductor can connects to that, which this this isolates this from ground because of these isolators right here, and then uh, to keep this from, you know, I kept this a half an inch away from it, and then this it, this distance from here to here is a good starting point, and it's approximately it's 12 inches from right here to right there, and you may end up once you put your I use an MFJ antenna lizer because it's a little better than using a set of meters. But however you decide to do that, but antennalizers are kind of expensive. I do a lot of this stuff, so it kind of fits my needs. But if you're going to use a set of gauges, first you want to, you want to have this distance from, from this point right here to your to your slide 12 inches. And you don't move this, you move your slide back and forth. And you know you may have to do that several times to get it right. You get you get your SWRs as low as you can. Well, uh, you can have it aimed. I got the back end at the ground. You can see my, my well, you can't really see it, but there's some. There's they call this the back door because this is your wire for your rejection. You got to have that hooked up for the beam to work right so it shoots the signal forward. But uh, that was basically how I mounted those gamma matches. And the rest of it's up to you, however, you decide to do the rest of it. But I just figured I would get the. A little bit of an information out there for people who may have have you know looked for this stuff and can't find it. I don't see anything online about it. I'm like, huh? And like I say, this is for um, I'm just putting to use stock radio. You know, all them boys be running some big power. I'm not doing that because I want to keep it right. I don't want my neighbors calling the the man on me. But uh, this four element antenna provides a gain under a factory wattage, and it's really good. Way, way far superior to a a ground plane. Other than it being directional instead of omnidirectional, I have to aim this antenna. So you see, you see my rotor, which I have. I had this antenna down for a day or two, and it was going to rain, so I didn't want water going into my bearings because the way this rotor is set up, it uh, lets the water shed off of it. But if you've got it tilted like that, and a lot of rain comes in, you're liable to get stuff in places you didn't want. So I put that over it just for the time being, just a little protection so while I get it back up in the air. Uh, I've got to do a little more finite because I wanted. I, to make sure my coax is right, but I, I kept those separated up that pole there, you know, a little side by side action. But uh, that's pretty much how that works. So I hope that helps everybody. And just one quick look again, you know, you see how I mounted the, 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 the slide. This is the beam right here. This is the gamma match. And then you see how that's mounted right there for the, uh, for the plate for the conductor or map bracket for the conductor, whatever you want to call that. But that's how that works. And heat shrink and solder all that stuff really good. Heat shrink the the gray the, the gray or nylon part so the sun doesn't get to it. Soldered it to that uh, center conductor so it's optimally connected. Same thing with the shield and did the same thing on the other side as well. And then after that it's all wrapped. So thank you for tuning in. Hit that like, subscribe, and that share.